these are the lesson activities for Math 117, Lesson 21. Number one, write each of the following percentages as a decimal. So to change a percent to a decimal, you divide by 100 or move the decimal two places to the left. So this is 0 0.127, 0 0.0025, 0 3.15, 3 quarters of a percent, that's 0.75%. So I changed the fraction to a decimal without changing the percent to a decimal. <clears throat> now move the decimal places two to the left. So I have 0.0075. Two and a half percent, um, it might be easier to write that as a decimal first, then um, change the fraction to a decimal, then change the percent to a decimal. So now we move the decimal two to the left, 0 0.025. Number two, the population of Americans aged 65 and older was 35.9 million in 2003. That population is projected to increase by 173% by 2060. Find the increase and the projected population in 2060. So 173% um, of 35.9. That's the increase amount. That's how much we're going to increase the population by, okay? So that would be 173% um, as a decimal is 1.73. Multiply by 35.9. And we get 62.107 million increase. Okay, so that's how many more people there will be um, age 65 and older. And then the new population, we have to add the increase amount to the old amount. So we used to have 35.9 pe million people um, in 2003. We're going to add the amount we increased by, 62.107 million people, and we get... 98.007 million. An important part of being a smart shopper is understanding how markups and markdowns work. A toy store buys a certain toy from the distributor to sell during the holiday season. The store marks the price of the toy up by 80%. After Christmas, the toys that are left are put on sale for 40% off. And after a while, the few unsold toys go on clearance for an additional 25% off. What is the pr percent profit loss for the toy store um, at the final sale? Okay, so let's see. Um, let's say the original toy wholesale price is $100. It just makes it easy to start at $100. Okay. Um, and then we're going to mark it up by 80%. So mark up 80%. So my new um, price is going to be $180. So you take 80% of 100 and add it on. So 80% of 100 plus the 100 that you paid. So you're in increasing the price by 80%. So <clears throat> you're going to make your original $100 back, and then you're going to make 80% profit, 80% of $100. And that's $180. Okay. Then we're going to put the toys that are unsold on sale for 40% off. So... 40% off the original price of $180. So I'm going to take $180 minus 40% of $180. And that comes out to 180 minus 72. Which is $108. So even at 40% off, the store is still making a profit of $8 because they paid $100. Okay, If they sold it at, at its original price, they'd make $80. When they sell it for 40% off, they make $8. But now we're going to go to clearance for an additional 25% off. So we take the $108, and we're going to take another 25% off, so minus 25% of 108 
So that's minus another $27, which is $81. Okay, so the final sale price is $81, um, <clears throat> which means the store is taking a loss. Um, and we want to say what percent loss, right? So they are making 81 of their $100 back, so they're losing $29. Sorry, they're losing $19 um, of the original 100 that they spent. So they are taking a 19% loss. Number four, percent decreases are often used incorrectly, sometimes on purpose in an effort to exaggerate or mislead. Here's an example. The police chief of Happyville reports that crime decreased by 200% in one year. He came up with this number based on reported crimes decreasing from 450 to 150. What does the police chief think he can get away with? Why does the police chief think he can get away with saying 200% decrease? And what is the real percent decrease? So the percent decrease is certainly not 200% because the most you can decrease something by percentage-wise, is 100%. If you decrease by 100%, 100% of it is gone. Okay, so a 100% decrease in crime would mean that there is no more crime. You can't decrease more than that. Okay, so it's not a 200% decrease. Um, the actual percent decrease would be um, the change, so 450 minus 150 compared to the original amount, 450. So that would be 300 over 450, and that comes out to 2 um, thirds, or 66, 0.667, which is 66.7% decrease. Okay, so that is the true decrease in crime um, it's the change in the amount of crimes over the original amount of crimes. Okay, so it's a, about a two-thirds decrease, or 66.7%. What the police chief did is, instead of dividing by the original amount of crimes, he divided by the new amount of crimes, 150, and 300 over 150 is 200. Okay, so that is incorrect. Um, he can't get away with saying a 200% decrease. It's actually impossible to have a 200% decrease. Number five, on the day you were born, your parents purchased a $500 savings bond that pays 10% annual simple interest. What is the bond worth on your 22nd birthday? Okay, so this is simple interest. So I'm gonna write down the formula, F equals P times one plus RT. So we're trying to figure out the future value 22 years from now. So F is what I don't know. Leave it as an F. Present value is $500. It was $500 the day you were born. One plus the interest rate is 10%, so I'm gonna put in a 0.1 for R. And then time is gonna be 22 years. 22 years from the day you were born. Um, and then we just do this calculation. So start by following the order of operations, we wanna do what's inside the parentheses first, right? The order of operation is PEMDAS, parentheses first. Okay, and then inside these parentheses, we have a multiplication and we have an addition. We always do multiplication before addition in the order of operations. So I'm gonna do 0.1 times 22, and I get 2.2, and then I'm gonna add one to that, and I get 3.2. So this is gonna be 500, times 3.2, which is $1,600. What is the value of the bond on any given birthday? So instead of putting in a 22, we'll just put in a T. And leave it like that. And part C, how many years will it take for the bond to reach a value of $5,000? So my future value now is going to be 5000 so I'm going to put that in for F. P is 500 
times one plus my interest rate of 0.1 t. And now I just need to solve this equation for t. I'm gonna start by distributing my 500 to each term in my parentheses. So I have 5,000 equals 500 plus 50t. And then I'm gonna subtract 500 from both sides so that I have 4,500 equals 50t. And then divide both sides by 50. So 4,500 divided by 50 is 90, so 90 years. Number six, government bonds are often sold based on their future value. So suppose you wanna buy a five-year $1,000 US Treasury bond that pays 4.28% annual simple interest. This means you buy a bond whose future value is $1,000. You price, the price you pay for the bond is its present value. How much should the bond cost? So I'm gonna write down the formula for simple interest because that was the key word we should zero in on, simple interest, write down the formula for simple interest. The future value is $1,000. We wanna know the present value. The interest rate is 0.0428 and time is five years from now. This is a five year bond. Said that right there. Okay, so following the order of operations, I do inside the parentheses first, and inside the parentheses, we would do the multiplication before the addition. So we do 0 0.0428 times five, and then add one, and I get 1.214. So 1,000 equals 1.214p. And then to get p by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by 1.214. those cancel, so we get P equals 823 dollars and 72 cents. Number seven, there is a payday loan company that offers quick short-term loans using the borrower's future paychecks as collateral the company charges $23 for each $100 loaned for a term of 14 days. Find the APR for this company. So we're gonna use um, simple interest again, okay? So we have um, my future value is equal to my present value times one plus RT. Okay, so my future value, if I take out my $100 loan, my future value, what I owe them is $123. So I'm gonna put $123 here Principal was $100, there are the present value. And then I have one plus R, which is what I'm trying to figure out. And then time is 14 days, but this formula requires you to put in the number of years here. Um, so 14 days is how many years? So I'm gonna do 14 out of 365, and it's actually 0 .038 approximately years. Okay, so I will write it as a fraction first. I did 14 out of 365. That's how many years or what fraction of a year we are being loaned this money for. Um, and it's easy, I think, easier if you change that fraction to a decimal. So we have 123 equals 100 times um, 14 over 365 is 0.0384. Okay, so now to solve for R, I'm gonna start by um, dividing both sides by 100. And I get 123 over 100 is 1.23 equals one plus 0 0.0384 R, because my 100's just canceled. Subtract one from both sides. So 1.23 minus one is 0.23. Um, when I subtract one from the right, the one goes away and I have 0 0.0384R and then divide both sides by 0 0.0384. So I have 0.23 divided by 0 0.0384 and I get 590 
um, if I don't round it all, I get five point nine nine six. That's if I don't, this, this 0 0.0384 was a rounded version of 14 over 365. I rounded that number. So um, if you don't round it, this is the answer you get. And then we have to change it to a percent by multiplying by 100. So my interest rate is actually 599.6%. And number eight, as of December 15th, 2015, the U.S. was 18 point trillion in debt. Let's assume the annual interest payment on this debt is 550 billion. We want to estimate the APR for this interest. So APR is just the amount of interest you pay compared to the amount you owe. So I'm going to divide my interest of 550 billion, and I'm going to write out all the zeros for billion. So that's a thousand million billion that's 550 billion and then I want to divide by the amount I owe which is 18.8 .8 trillion so this is 18 trillion 800 billion no millions no thousands no hundreds so let's double check this is hundreds thousands millions billions trillions okay and then on top, I have hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. So the reason I like to write out all the zeros is that it helps me actually do the division. I can cancel zeros. If you have this, any zeros that appear both on the top and the bottom, can cancel. And I'm left with 55 over 1,880. And that comes out to... Um, 0 0.029, which is the same thing as 2.9% APR.